first gentleman here today will be Johannes Eholm Hansen. Johannes is the chairman of the board of directors of Galatia Airports. And um, I will not go into details with uh, what kind of institution the Galatia Airport, Airports is, because Johannes will do that, but I can say that uh, it was funded in 2016, 100% uh, owned by the Greenlandic government, and its aim is to develop uh, the three airports in New Kilodisit and Kofto. And Johannes is a lawyer working within the field of legal risk uh, management, operations, and business strategy. And from Johannes, uh, among other things, we hope to learn a little thing, of, uh, a little thing or two about how the three new airports will be able to support the mining sector, and also a little bit about how it will be financed. So the floor is yours. Thank you. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I have the uh, less attractive task of changing your mindset from mining into infrastructure and to keep you awake after your lunch. Uh, but hopefully we will, uh, we might, I will manage to do so within the next 15 minutes. Um, I'm to talk about the uh, new airport uh, projects in, uh, in Greenland. Uh, those are not current. Current infrastructure comes after with these three gentlemen who are here. Uh, I'll talk about future projects. <coughs> And since ja Jakob from Air Greenland asked, I do not, although it's future, I do not have a, a, a forward-looking disclaimer. Because I do actually believe that these projects are going to happen. Uh, I know that they're going to happen. Uh, very briefly, what I'm going to touch upon is this, uh, but I will not keep strictly to the, uh, to the topics here. Uh, and if you have any questions on the way, please feel free. Kalatin Airports, as it was said during the introduction, was formed by the Greenland government in 2016. Uh, the real work started in, in the beginning of uh, 2017. Uh, the first half year was more about setting up the company, setting up office facilities and an organization, etc. Um, and in the beginning of 2017, we started the actual development uh, process of these projects. Um, the, um, the objective is defined by law, uh, it is to build three new airports. Um, and uh, until now, we have been capitalized with 294 million Danish krona uh, to fund the development cost. Um, we are, uh, the, the total investment is uh, 3.7, uh, 3.6, but in 2007 price, 2017 prices, 3.7 billion Danish krona now. Uh, out of that, the Greenland government will contribute 2.1 billion, and the rest of the funding comes from the Danish <coughs> government, uh, partly through loans, partly through equity, and partly through guarantees to commercial banks. Uh, <coughs> uh, the, um, the operation of the airports, all three airports, is supposed to start in, uh, in Q4 2023. So it probably coincides with some of the mining projects that we heard about this morning. Um, the tender for uh, the projects has been slightly delayed. It was supposed to be launched in July, June last year, but it was delayed due to um, uh, election and government uh, or political issues in Greenland. Uh, but we are launching the tender within, I would say, within days. I'm not going to disclose when exactly, but it is very near. Um, the history. I mean, why why does Greenland do this? Uh, why do they? want to invest in three new airports, as you can see here, from south up to the north, in, in, from Akortok in the south, to Nuuk, uh, the capital, and the um, The existing airport infrastructure in Greenland is from the Second World War. Uh, the main entry to Greenland comes through the airport in Kangasuswak. Um, very, very few passengers have their destination or their place of departure in Kangasuswak. It is just uh, an airport in the middle of nowhere uh, for good reasons because it was built for military operations during the Second World War. Um, and, uh, and that means that everyone who comes to Greenland has to commute onwards from there uh, via, via domestic flights <coughs> to their final destination. And the whole idea of, uh, of investing in the new airports is to improve that infrastructure and get rid of the, or create airports in the in the places where people actually go. And 80% of all passengers who fly to and from Greenland go to either Nuuk or Ilulisse. 
The, um, the third airport in the south uh, is built uh, mainly as a, is a political project, is a, le a regional development project uh, uh, because it is needed. But with the uh, with the um, talks we heard this morning about uh, all the mining projects that are in the pipeline, I'm certain that it will be used for it in South Greenland as well. <coughs> The, um, the three, very briefly about the three airport projects, this is the one in southern Greenland. Uh, a 1,500 meter runway, it can be extended up to 1,800 meters, but not anything more than that. Um, the city itself is down here, the city of Akortok, and this road has been built already. <coughs> Once we start uh, building, uh, we will get the machines on shore here, and then they will be transported up here and stay there until the airport is finished. Um, this is just some basic data on uh, the scale of the project. Um, the, uh, this one is still being uh, in, the, in the design phase uh, or engineering phase, both buildings and the runway. Uh, if we go to the next one, Inudusit and Nuuk will be tendered together. Uh, and as I said earlier, they will be tendered uh, within a few days. Uh, this is the location. You have the existing runway here and you have the new runway up here a 2,200 meter run, and you have the city down here. Uh, it's a 2,200 meter runway uh, with uh, precision landing equipment and whatever is required in a new modern airport. Um, slightly larger terminal buildings. Uh, this is a terminal building uh, supposed to be able to, to accommodate up to 600 passengers at a time. Um, this airport is built mainly for the purpose of uh, development of tourism in Greenland because this is the place where all the tourists go. Uh, I'm sure that once Air Greenland is going to get to the floor here, they will also tell that they want to spread the tourism out to different parts of the country, which I can only uh, fully support. Finally, look, uh, this is uh, the existing airport, the orange ones you see there, and the new one on top of it. Uh, so this one is a bit challenging to build, because we have to build it while the other uh, airport is in operation. And you have the city down here. Uh, again, a slightly larger airport, again, not the runway, it's the same as an Ilulisset, but uh, an airport terminal with, uh, that's supposed to accommodate 800 passengers, 400 incoming, 400 departing passengers, or any combination of those. Um, in terms of... Um, well, as, just to come back to where I said the reason why, why it was decided politically to build these airports is that by creating and by building these airports in Nuuk and said we actually get direct flights to the destinations where 80% of all travelers to and from Greenland go or depart from. Uh, so it will mean a significant decline in domestic uh, traffic in Greenland, air traffic. Actually, uh, I believe the number is in the range of 40% uh, of less kilometers that will be traveled by air um, after we uh, get rid of the commuting between the two main destinations and the Um The uh, development phase of these projects has been ongoing since the beginning of 2017 until uh, now, uh, where we will launch the tender. and. Uh, it is it's been a relatively quick process. Uh, it could have been quicker if we didn't have the political hiccups on the way. Uh, but <laughs> reality is that we have probably gotten the fastest uh, environmental impact assessment uh, ever for a large infrastructure project in Greenland. Uh, it has taken us uh, one year to get it for ilo and uh, one and a half year for Nuuk. We received it uh, middle of last week for Nuuk. Uh, so all the... Um, all the preconditions for starting the construction are now in place. Uh, the financing uh, was also agreed last week. The, the external financing from the Danish government was agreed last week. Here is the structure. You have a, holding, a government agreement. You have a holding company here that will own two subsidiaries. One subsidiary holds in the Nuka Set, which are both commercial airports. They will not receive any kind of subsidies. They will be run purely on commercial basis. And uh, we have the local airport down in the south, which, uh, which will uh, be funded 100% by the government, uh, by the Greenland government, via, uh, via the holding company. Uh, this airport, this is the company where, these, in these two commercial airports, this is where the um, Danish government will contribute with the final funding. Uh, and uh, I don't think there's any reason to dwell on that. That is, uh, should be sufficient funding to, to complete these projects. 
Now, um, <clears throat> how do these uh, projects contribute to Greenland? Uh, that was one of the things that I would uh, like to mention here. Well, during construction, obviously, there are jobs. Uh, there, there will be job creation. There will also be opportunity to uh, train, especially younger people, in some of the areas that also mining companies are looking for. Uh, you probably didn't notice, but if you, if, you, if you had a close look at the data for each airport, you see that the quantities of hard rock that needs to be drilled, blasted and crushed and filled up again is 14 million cubic meters. It's a huge amount of hard rock. Uh, and uh, the equipment we need for that kind of operation is exactly the same as uh, some of the mining companies need for their operations. So we will, to some extent, either work together or compete with each, with, with each other uh, for um, machinery, heavy machinery, uh, heavy machinery operators, um, and other labor. Uh, I would I would invite uh, mining companies who, who do operate or plan to operate in Greenland to work together with us uh, to uh, develop uh, the, the necessary labor because we will only need them for a period of four years. Uh, and then they are free on the market uh, and, and will be ready for you to pick up for your operations. <clears throat> another, um, another element uh, where we are contributing to, the Greenland, to Greenland is through uh, knowledge transfer. It is a requirement for those who uh, work on the project. Uh, many of them are uh, companies from outside because we don't have any company in Greenland that has the magnitude of handling these projects. Uh, they, there is a requirement that they engage local labor, there is a requirement that they transfer knowledge, etc., as part of the tendering conditions. Longer term, I would say the, the, these airports offer better accessibility uh, to the country, both from Europe, North America, and for that matter also from Asia. Uh, because with this size of runways, it is possible to fly all the way actually to, to Asia, uh, at least the northern part of Asia. Um, whether that's going to happen is another question, because that's for the airlines to decide, not for us. Um, <clears throat> the intention is also to increase or to support the increase of tourism. Uh, we will provide the infrastructure, but uh, obviously uh, the, tour, uh, the, business, the, the tourism industry needs to build the necessary reception facilities like hotels um, and other um, requirements that, are, that, that the tourists will be asking for. Um, one, one of the, uh, there are already several hotel projects being launched in, in, in the wake of this project, uh, these airport projects here. So, so there is already a follow-up industry that's developing. Um, one thing that is, uh, I mentioned briefly before, but I think it's worth mentioning, one of the significant contributions is the reduction of CO2. The fact that, um, that the inland air transport is reduced by 40% also means that the CO2 emissions from uh, the main air, uh, airport operator in Greenland will decline by approximately the same amount, 40%. That is quite significant. Uh, but that's not something we have uh, marketed as, uh, as such, but it is, it is significant. Uh, and I think Jago from your Greenland will, can, will be able to confirm that. Now, in terms of cooperation with the mining industry, um, these are the prognosis for the, um, for passenger prognosis for the uh, project. Um, <coughs> You can see here a, a 4.0% uh, annual growth in passengers uh, for Nuuk, uh, 3.4 for EUZ, and a, a flat curve for, uh, for Akopta. Uh, that flat curve is, is a cautious approach. Um, certainly, if some of these mining projects do develop, uh, in the south, uh, that number is going to increase. But we have taken a cautious approach to our passenger prognosis as, as the basis for our, our business case. Um, this is just another picture of the same. There's no need to dwell on that. Um, as I said, with, with respect to the mining industry, we would like to share to the extent that is relevant. Uh, we could work together on equipment. We could work together on labor, uh, training of staff, cargo handling. Lease of offices. We will also build. We are also building office space in the airports. Uh, so for those who need that, that will be possible. Uh, you just need to tell us early. Uh, and finally, hand, handling uh, of uh, hangars and warehouse handling uh, of warehouses uh, is also something that we will be able to offer to the mining industry. 
So those were the words. It's very brief, but uh, it's a huge, it's the biggest infrastructure project ever in Greenland, uh, and is set to finish in Q4 2023. So we will wish you welcome by then. Thank you.